Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG. I am Sovereign and in today's video we're going to be going over Shield Ashimu versus Armor Ashimu and what is the best way to fit the Ashimu itself. Now there's been a lot of stuff going around that the armor is a lot worse than the shield comparatively and that is completely true on most levels above the T6 category. I'll be doing a very in-depth video with Nina working on the Math Magician stuff for me because I haven't got the brain cells for it. But once we get all of the stuff together, everything is actually brought into one place, then I'll make the video explaining everything of how and why armor is just inferior and perhaps what the devs can do to make it more balanced. Right, so let's go straight into the armor fit Ashimu, the way that it's supposed to be fit according to its role and its actual bonuses. So if you haven't seen the Ashimu before, we do have a roll bonus of 100% energy and Nosferatu overload penalty. This means that you can actually run the Nosferatu Nosferatu all the time and suck the juice out of other ships. They do not need to be above you in capacitor level for it to work. We have plus 15% energy Nosferatu efficiency, 15% energy neutralizer strength, and 20% stasis web of fire optimal range with every level of advanced electronic warfare bonus. The advanced cruiser command bonus per level is 12% on the medium laser damage and 7.5% medium laser tracking speed per level in advanced cruiser command bonus. So we'll try to go through these quickly so it's not a 50 minute long video where I go over both fits. We do have videos of us doing 1v1s versus a Cinemal in both Shield and the Ashimu fit and then against Phantasm in both the Shield and Armor fits. We did this so you could compare the actual damage types from two different cannons being Thermal, Kinetic and Explosive and Lasers being EM and Thermal. It's not the best test or the best way to do it because all circumstances can be different but I'll explain what happens later on in the 1v1s. So in the top slots we obviously have the Centum C-type medium pulse lasers. In the mid slots we have two medium Nosferatus, we have a Predator Warp Scrambler and a Predator Stasis Webifier along with a crappy Mark 7 Infiltrator drone, not really a big deal. Now this is on the test server boys, but we're only using modules and we're only using skills that are available on the live server so we have 554 in most skills on the cruisers and we're only using C-types and we're only using Meta 8 in the spots that we don't have C-types. In the low slots, we have one C-type large armor repairer. We have two C-type adaptive armor hardeners and a C-type medium micro warp drive. Now, the problem with the armor fit that you'll see with the shield fit earlier is that you cannot fit a large NOS or a large newt with a large armor repairer. The power grid requirement is too high. Even with 554 in engineering and three power grid three rigs, you cannot fit them both. Unlike the shield fit, as you'll see later on, you actually can. So in the rig slots, we are fitting anti-explosive pump 3, an anti-kinetic pump 3, and a laser burst aerator 3 for a little bit more DPS. In the engineering slots we have a targeting subsystem controller for two of them and a dynamic fuel valve 3. Now we've got the target in there because you don't need any CCCs, you don't need any semis on the armor fit. So let's move straight in to the cold stats itself. We have 667.05 DPS. Our defense rating on the shields is standard 6620 because this is the armor fit one we have 9321 armor hit points our em resistance 50 thermal 35 kinetic 55 and explosive 51 we have an 8489 structure hit points on there obviously with the 33 percent across the board our capacitor is stable and very well stable our targeting scan resolution is 811 millimeters this is a very very fast locking ship and the quicker you can get to locking down your adversary's cap which is what the yashima is really good at the better our navigation is 300 34.95 meters a second with a warp preparation time of 4.2 seconds is very fast warp speed at 3.8 AUS second so let's head outside quickly and check the hot stats with the defenses active we are running this Ashimu more defensively there are ways you can fit this for a more offensive fit but this is how I like to run my ships themselves so we're going to activate the two armor adaptives we will activate the micro warp drive let's have a look at the stats now so our armor resistance resistances will be 68, 59, 72, and 69 with still the same amount of armor hit points at a 42,024 EHP level. Our navigation is 1,927.9 meters a second with the MWD active. Now with this armor fit, you're actually looking at taking a big hit to your role, the actual role of the ship within fleets or as 
solo. Your role is to be using Nosferatu's and neutralizers to target an enemy's cat to lower it as quickly as possible so you can murder them. Now with the armor fit, because you either have to go one medium armor ripper and a large Nosferatu on one side, because of the size of the large armor ripper on the power grid usage, it takes up too much for you to be able to fit that large Nosferatu as I said earlier. So you're actually taking a hit in the roll. And the reason why I fit these like this is to keep them as comparative as possible with the shield versus armor. There are other ways to do this. And let's take a look at the shield Ashimu. So we have the same high slots. We have different mid slots because we have the large Nosferatu in there. We have the same with the Predator Stasis Webifier, the Predator Scrambler, and we have a medium energy Nosferatu to keep that capacitor stable. In the low slots, we have one large shield booster. As you can see, you can have the large shield booster and the large Nos on this ship. Two adaptive and vulnerability fields and the medium micro warp drive. In the rig slots, we have the anti-EM and the anti thermal. We have the laser burst aerator giving you the same DPS as the other ship. In the engineering slots, we have a power grid because we need to fit that large Nos in there. We have the dynamic fuel valve to take some of the heat off of the MWD and we have another ancillary power grid 3. We do not need any CCCs on this fit. No semiconductors takes a large amount of the cost off of your ship. So let's get into the only difference we have here. On the defense, we have 6,620 shield hit points. We have 40 EM, 52 thermal, 40 kinetic, and 55 explosive. With 35,273 in the EHP. Now in the capacitor, we are only half stable with the capacitor using the shield modules. That's because the shield modules take a lot more cap than the armor ones, which is supposed to be their deciding factor on how they are balanced. It just doesn't work out that way, especially in the higher tiers of ships. Let's go outside and have a look at the resistances comparably with the armor ones. This is where it starts getting a little bit silly. This is an armor ship. Please remember that this is supposed to be armor fit. Look at those resistances. 74, 79, 74, and 80 with a 49,682 EHP. Now these shield hit points don't need to be as high as the armor hit points because you are repping faster and it is a lot more efficient compared to the armor, which shouldn't be the case. So with the fittings out of the way, we're going to move on to the actual 1v1s. Now I won't be talking over these 1v1s. I will do a little explanation before, but you can see that the first fight against the Cinnabal, the Ashimu did take some damage. The shield Ashimu went to half armor, but you capped out the Cinnabal a lot quicker using the large Nos and the medium Nos kept it in range with the web and the scram slowed it down. This syllable is currently using a micro warp drive. And when you get to the armor 1v1s, you can see just how quickly that syllable burns down the Ashimu completely. Just how quickly the phantasm murders it. The Ashimu, the shield Ashimu ends up with 100, 100, 100 with still 50% capacitor against the phantasm and killing it, wiping out his cap a lot quicker. And then we move on to the armor Ashimu that actually gets obliterated by the phantasm. Like it's not, is such a one-sided battle and that is against a weapon type that is supposed to be crap against armor those resistances with the amount that's rep just doesn't compare from the armor and shield
Right, so that's all we have for today. Please make sure to check out the 1v1s. They will show you just the disparity between armor and shield, even on ships that are supposed to be armor oriented. Remember to like and sub if you haven't already. This is your one-stop shop for Eve Echoes. Fly safe and avoid local chat scams.